I mean, in some way, I think we did well to, to go so far into like, this is bad and it came good. Anyway. <laughs> I, think, I think we've made it. <laughs> I think so. We've full circle. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Hello and welcome to the TLDR podcast. I'm Jack Kelly and I'm joined by Ben Blissett. Hello. And Rory Taylor. Hello. How are we both doing? Good. Yeah, Feeling very good. Good. Yeah. good. <laughs> Sorry. What? I was just. Just anticipation. Just anticipation. Yeah, excitement. Of this exciting. Normal um, podcast. Normal podcast. Yeah. Are you feeling more North American today, would you say, vaguely? Feeling, feeling yeah, if I had to, if you had to pinpoint, pick. I'd okay. be pretty Canadian. Right Canadian? Now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Wonder what that is. Um, as always, in today's episode, we're going to be running through our main story, which today is. I honestly don't know. What is it? We'll find out. Uh, we're going to talk about <laughs> local elections, which are. <laughs> are we keeping this in? It's sort of behind the scenes, okay, behind cool, the lens. Cute, cute. Local elections which are happening in Canada, <laughs> here oh, okay. in the UK, uh, on the day of re- release of this podcast. Great. I think, yes, tomorrow, today. Today. <laughs> Thursday. Thursday. Yes. In the UK. Yeah. Not in Canada. Not in Canada. We're also going to be running through our underreported stories of the day, and we're going to be going over the world leader leaderboard and updating how we think the winners and losers politically this week have shaken out. Let's start with underreported stories, though, and let's start with yours, Ben. Yeah, so this is underreported in the sense that I think... uh, certain aspects of the media have looked incorrectly at this story. Mm. Um, So it was sort of announced this morning by the right-wing press that uh, the first uh, flight technically to Rwanda has happened, or at least the first deportation. Um, From Toronto? Not from Toronto, no, from from the UK. Okay. Uh, Really going with this Canada thing this week. You haven't seen how hard the graphics went. Okay, that's true. I haven't. Um, I'll assume that they've gone quite hard. Sure. Um... So, yeah, ministers are claiming that the first round of flight is taken off. Uh, the, the sort of, like, unnamed migrant involved in this was flown to Rwanda, in M- Rwanda on Monday evening, um, but he's actually technically under something called the Voluntary Removal Scheme. Mm. So it actually has kind of nothing to do with the Rwanda scheme. There's all of this debate about the Rwanda Bill, Safety of Rwanda Act now, um, you know, all these different bit, bits of legislation to try and make it work. This has nothing to do with any of that. This is a completely separate scheme called the Voluntary Removal Scheme. The person received £3,000 from the UK because they agreed to uh, be removed to Rwanda. Uh, the UK has paid for five years of housing for this individual um, and is, is getting employment support as well. I mean, the claim that this has anything to do with the Rwanda plan is an absolute falsehood. It's absolute fiction. Even people on the right are criticising the government, claiming that this is them making the Rwanda scheme work. Nigel Farage himself, obviously, um, you know, former leader of UKIP, very critical of mm-hmm. um, immigration in the UK, um, has said it's it's not going to stop the boats and it has nothing to do with the Rwanda plan. Mm-hmm. So it's sort of irrespective of where you lie on the political spectrum, like, you, you just can't, it, it's just inconceivable that this has anything to do with the Rwanda plan, despite how the government are trying to spin it. Cool. You get the sense that maybe they did this uh, the week of local elections to yeah. try and say, hey, look, something's happening. Something around the ish. Yeah. Um, but I can't imagine it will move the dial at all. It's also, what a, what a terrible line from the government that we're going to fix. You know, we're pointing to this example as an example of them fixing immigration of like, you know, an example of like a policy that could wide out, uh, roll out more widely. Um, you know, they paid someone £3,000 to go to Rwanda and paid for their housing for five years. Mm. That is not, that, you know, and this is someone, that is what the Rwanda plan is. That is that, yeah, that, that, and it, that, you know. this is someone whose asylum claim is processed and then rejected, not just someone who crossed the channel and then yeah. instantly got sent. This it's it's yeah, completely different. It does sound like quite a lot per person mm. that they've had to stay here while their claim was processed. It had to then be fully processed and then voluntarily they take quite a lot of money to leave. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's so it's a plan a plan. That doesn't work. I didn't say it. Well, at least I mean. What they've done so far hasn't is not. It's not. Surely this isn't what they want to sell to the public as what the Rwanda plan is. If it's all they've mm. got, maybe it well, is. Maybe. Rory, anyway. what's your underreported story of the week? Mine um, comes from Canada. No way. Yes. Uh, 
So, uh, yeah, I thought I thought it'd be good to do a bit of news Canada since we never cover it on this podcast. No. Be good to shed a bit of Infamously. light on there. But now I feel like this story is a bit too sort of lighthearted and something. So I, I'm not sure how well it reflects on my knowledge of Canadian news, but we'll see. Okay. Basically, um, the leader of Canada's opposition, a guy called Pierre Poilievre, mm-hmm. I believe, um, any Canadians can correct my pronunciation. He's the leader of the Conservatives in Canada. He got kicked out of Parliament for calling Justin Trudeau a wacko. This wacko policy by this wacko Prime Minister. I'm going to ask the Honourable uh, Leader of the Opposition to withdraw uh, that term. I simply withdraw and replace with the aforementioned oh. adjective. I order you to withdraw from the House. Mm. Uh, which is apparently unparliamentary language. And the Speaker said, you know, withdraw it. And he didn't. He refused to. So he got kicked out of Parliament. Um, he called him a wacko. Uh, I've got the full quote. It's to do with drug decriminalization um so uh probably ever said when will we put an end to this wacko policy by this wacko prime minister Whoa. I was just, which apparently you can't say i, I saw your quote there mm. and I, I sort of saw the first half of it where he said uh, wacko policy and i was about to defend him and say well, he's not describing the prime minister as a wacko True. he's mm. saying it as a wacko policy he then yeah. but then he doubled down so there's no defense there is yeah there? um yeah just add that to the list of words you can't say in, in Can't say wacko. Yeah. What else can you say, will we? <laughs> yeah. I don't, the, well, can we bleep that? <laughs> yeah. I probably can. Can you? No. That's not parliamentary. Definitely, yeah. Definitely it's very, if, you, if you can't say, You have to bleep like, that too. We can't... I think it's about calling people those things. If rather, I call... Yeah, I think they wouldn't allow there's that. Been, there's been a few instances where people, especially people in, in the Commons, have had, like, hate mail sent to them mm. and they'll, they'll like, mm. read it out. As a transcript, so. Mm. so oh yeah, what if it's quoted? That's fine. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You should bleep it either way, though. Yeah. Um, let's move on to the main story. Um, we're going to be talking about the elections. Unfortunately, not the Canadian election because that's not scheduled to happen for another couple of years. Well, um, actually, it's next year. It's the latest. Next happen, year. Yeah. Oh wow! So there'll be another Canada special soon. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Um, next year then. Um, so let's talk about the elections happening in the UK, disappointingly. Um, do you want to run through an overview of what we can expect before we dive into kind of more of the details of what's happening today as the video comes out? Yeah, so people are going to the polls all across uh, the UK. No? No. Not, yeah. England not Northern Wales. Ireland and not Scotland. Okay, some <laughs> of the UK. Yes. Uh, and they're voting in, I think... Um, <laughs> Can we just cut this out a second? <laughs> so do you want to run through an overview of what's happening today as this video comes out, as this podcast is released? Um, and then we'll get into some of the more details. Yeah, so voters sort of across England and Wales are going to the polls today to vote in a sort of variety of different elections. So the big ones, the ones that people have sort of like spoken about quite a bit, are the local elections. Um, these are elections that, a lot of the local elections are ones that had previously taken place because cancel elections and timings mm. are all a bit weird in 2021. And that was back when, you know, when Johnson was in his sort of honeymoon period, the Tories did very well in those local elections. So basically they've got their, their, their um, starting from a very high point, mm-hmm. almost artificially high point, because this was before Partygate had happened. This was right in the middle of um, I think the vaccine rollout, the vaccine rollout yeah. all of that sort of stuff. So um, the Tories are sort of defending around 1,000 council seats. Mm-hmm. Um, it's expected that like a bad day for them would be them losing around 500 of those 1,000. Labour are also defending roughly about 1,000. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they're expected, considering their national polling, to be doing very well. But this that's the thing that a lot of people are, speaking, uh, are talking about. There are also other elections taking place. There were police and crime commissioner elections, uh, which are pointless, so we won't cover them. Um, and then we've also got a by-election um, happening. And it's to do with... So this was... I'll, I'll, I'll go over to Rory here because. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, I'm starting to forget the constituency name. Yeah. No. Sorry. I was also going to say there down. are mayoral elections as oh, well. Oh, there are also mayoral. Sorry. Yeah. And there are, are also mayoral elections. Obviously, the biggest one being in London, but there's also like East. Um, Manchester, yeah, Manchester, West Midlands, West Midlands Tees sorry. Valley. There's yes. 10. 10 mayoral elections. So we've got oh, like keep going. Burnham, how many Andy streets, you know. Um, how, many can we name? how many can we name out of the 10? Yeah. Um, You've done four. Uh, out of the 10? Yeah. Uh, yeah, four. Four. Um, Rory, can you can you beat four? People or no, elections? L- elections. So we've got London, Locations. London, Manchester, Tees Valley, West Midlands. Uh, there is a, I think it's a new East Midlands mayor. Sure. Oh, East Midlands. Then yeah. there's um, 
uh, there's a, it's like North Yorkshire or any, uh, there's, the problem is there's a lot of just like directions and <laughs> places. I can't remember what combination of directions it there are. It is weird that not many yeah. of the mayors are like actual cities. Like you'd expect yeah, just name sort of cities. This is why, authorities. Yeah. It's very, this is like, why it's very is there, forgettable. Why is there not a Birmingham one? Like it's very odd Bigger to than Manchester. mayor of the northeast is a sort of strange yeah. concept. What about Liverpool? Do they have one? They, uh, do they have a mayor? Yeah. Yeah, they do. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they by law have to all be called oh, the yeah, same but, name. Come on. Doesn't count. What? Does the, the Liverpool the, mayor is no. a proper mayor? The, <laughs> yeah, Liverpool have had the, their previous. Sorry. The, the, oh, I see. The, yeah. Their previous mayor has exactly the same name as the current mayor. Oh, got it. Yes, I remember this. Yes. But is it a real mayor? <laughs> what, as in, what is sense? it a mayor with authority rather like, like, like a lord like mayor? Andy kind Burnham of style mayor, or is it a mayor with a bell? Okay. I spoke so confident. You asked me a question. I was like, "Yeah, you know, giving you all all, all the facts." And then well, you, you start throwing curveballs at Not me. Not even throwing. I'm just mildly probing, <laughs> and you're falling apart. Are they a mayor, mayor, or are they a? Well, it's a, it's a like everywhere the... has a mayor. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah. it, it, but some mayors just have bells, and some mayors have like budgets. <laughs> like, some yeah. Have, I don't want that. There's a tattoo somewhere. I think. Okay. Um. What was the question about um, Blackpool South? <laughs> what was the uh, by election? Blackpool Sorry, South. Sorry, just to wrap up the mayor. There's a bunch yeah. of mayors, was, yeah. yeah, and like most of them, we don't know about or care about. It turns out. Well, well don't I say we. Say yeah, I'm not. Uh, yeah, um, but really, the the mayor the mayoral elections that are sort of being focused on because they might switch. Yes, are uh, West Midlands and Tees Valley are two big ones because they're the Conservative incumbents. Two of the four we know. Yeah, <laughs> London. Obviously, people are paying attention to London because it's London. Yeah, but even though Sadiq Khan is polling very comfortably, but yeah, it would be very yeah. embarrassing if yeah for us if he loses. Yeah, and for him. And for him. Um, but yeah, it's mostly Tees Valley and West Midlands. A lot of the focus is on. Yeah. Um, no one, everyone knows Andy Burnham's going to win. Sure. Um, King of the North. As King, of the King of the North. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's, then, that's almost an Alexa title. It's yeah. Chuck a cord, yeah. like a cardinal direction on it and that <laughs> would be a position. Yeah. I find it interesting as well that both Andy Street and Andy Burnham in their like... Called Andy? Well, yeah, that's no. interesting. <laughs> okay. But if you found that interesting, I'd be very <laughs> concerned. Not, that is not what I found interesting. Yeah. Not nearly as interesting as a Liverpool fact, let's be real. But um, no, both of them in their like camp, their, their election literature... Um, a very minimal on their um, party branding. Andy Burden, presumably just because he's an institution in him, in and of mm. himself, mm. so he doesn't need the Labour sort of tag yeah. because he's playing so well. And I think Andy Street probably for the opposite reason. Yes. Because he's a Conservative, you know. Yeah. So you don't really want to be advertising that. Um, Certainly there were comparisons the between Sadiq's and his of like mm. how much Khan mentions all of like regularly photos of him with Starmer and all these yeah. kinds of things. And then in like, his manifesto, yeah, 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 exactly. I, I've seen the same thing where it's the comparison. Yeah. And there's pictures with him with Rachel Reeves mm-hmm. and the shadow cabinet and, and <laughs> Andy Berda is very much like mm-hmm. you are voting for me, yeah. and me alone, uh, which yeah. is, which is fair. I think he is, he is a proper uh, institution, but yeah, let's move on from Mers Cause turns out we don't know what we're we don't talking know about. Nothing about Mers. No, um, there Do is a like by-election. Mers? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Just a straw poll. Yeah. Do you think they're a good idea? Yeah, I think I think particularly when you see what people like and Andy Burnham, th- there is a reason that he's so so sort of popular in Manchester, and there is a reason that uh, he's sort of nationally uh, quite popular when you're looking at what he's done for Manchester. You know, he's he's expanded quite a lot of their like transport network. He's been a really proud advocate for Manchester when mm-hmm. you had things like COVID settlements, um, and when the government were handing out uh, and doing like lockdowns and things like that. Um, and you had the, the, the tiered approach. He was a really good advocate for that area. And that position sort of elevated him to be able to do that. I think that if they're given the right funding and the right sort of like authority, you can really mm-hmm. make a difference to a city with those powers and with that budget. And Andy Burnham has been a really good example of that. Um, I think the issue with the system we have is that it's sort of arbitrary as to which areas have yeah, mm-hmm. mayors. Like, like they've just been doing like bespoke deals for different regions, whereas we, really we should just establish sort of level of governance mm-hmm. system uh, that's sort of universal um, or like at least follow some sort of logic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's this slightly odd system, but okay. for those that have mayors, yeah, pretty good, good I them. suppose. Yeah. We got one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Um, Blackpool South by election. <laughs> there we sure. go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, basically, Scott Benton, Scott Benton, Tory MP resigned because he was going to be, there was a recall. Basically, he got done in a, like a lobbying sting operation mm-hmm. And uh, 
they uh, were going to suspend him for 30 days, I think. Sure. Recall petition triggered, but instead of facing that, he decided to resign. Um, he had a very relatively small majority in what was a previously Labour seat. So I think no one's expecting anything other than Labour picking mm -hmm. up that seat. So um, that's not really going to be a massive story, but just adds to the potential for Conservative losses yeah. in the wider the wider picture. I think the, and then with that, I think the issue is, is that there's been talk for a little while about um, backbench rebels using today as a sort of springboard to try and unseat Sunak. And I think that that is a just objectively terrible, terrible idea. I mean, things are going quite badly, but I think the, the sort of rebels seem to forget that in first past the post, you can keep dropping. Like mm -hmm. you might be sitting on around maybe a hundred seats if you're lucky right now, but you know, you could, you could end up with 10. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that the rebels who are frustrated with Sunak, who think that if they go harder right, then they might be able to recover this. They might be able to improve their polling. I think, um, yeah, I think that they might try and use this as an opportunity to try and get signatures for a vote of no confidence in him or, in him or something like that. To obviously weaken his authority going into the election, which would sort of hurt Sunak, you know, at best hurt Sunak and mm -hmm. at worst unseat him, have somebody else in there and their, their polling could drop even further. It only That would only serve to um, sort of reaffirm this image that people have of the Tory party as deeply divided, mm -hmm. deeply fragmented, um, and sort of not being able to even run themselves, let alone the country. Yeah. You know, it builds into that image that, that has sort of been created. Um, so, yeah, th that, that's that's the sort of concern from Sunak's point this week, is that because you've got a load of different elections happening, mm -hmm. if he loses them all and he loses sort of like 500 of his council seats, then, you know, the, the rebels might sort of use that that yeah. sort of negative mm. negativity towards him to try and unseat him, which, as I've said, I really don't think would be a good idea on their behalf. Yeah. Um, I, this is... <laughs> Sorry, I just remembered something quite interesting about the mayoral <laughs> Oh, elections. no. Don't bring so back back. The East Midlands mayoral election. Yeah. This is a new may mayoralty that they've invented. Yeah. Um, the guy running as a Conservative candidate is Ben Bradley, who currently is a Conservative MP for a seat in that region. And he is mm. also the head of that local council. And wow. now he's running to be the mayor of the region. So he, he could have three jobs that he's been elected to. That's crazy. At different levels, which... I don't know how... Surely that's not how possible. That could, yeah. How do you have time? No idea. No idea. I'm Is sure the assumption was... that he will just continue in all three? Yeah. I guess maybe he's also thinking, I'm, I might lose my seat at the next election. If, if I can be a mayor, that's, True. that's a job. Yeah. <laughs> do you think he'll win? Uh, the, may the mayoral yeah, the... election. Uh, uh, I think, I think he way. has a chance okay. of winning the mayoral election. I don't think it's a, you know, guaranteed, but it's up for grabs. Okay. Interesting. Um, it's difficult because people don't really do much polling on these, especially the ones that are new. Yeah, new mayoralties. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, sorry, that was a, just <laughs> to take Fun, us back to the mayoral election. No, Have you both voted today, by the way? Uh, yes. Yeah. How was it? It was. It was great. It was in a church. Was it? Yeah. Very good. I'm yeah. gonna vote after on, work. On, after uh, yeah. Uh, me too. Primary school. My yeah. polling yeah. station. Where is yours? Where is yours? At primary school as well. Oh, yeah. Jealous. Church <laughs> sucks. <laughs> Like, How's the weather? So boring. Um, if you look behind you, you can see it's it's very dry today. So it is, yeah. But this Sorry. is this is a good bit, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's I a, thought this was a good no, bit. No, it's a good bit. Yeah. Not, no, no, it's, it's a good not bit. A good bit. Oh, I, like um, I think it's quite amusing that the Tory rebels have this plan that they've sort of set out there saying if we replace Sunak, we'll get like a, a penny mordant type person mm. to unify the party, then they've got this five point plan and a hundred day mm -hmm. policy blitz, and they say, Well, if we do all this we can turn things around and it involves things like cutting migration, mm -hmm. cutting benefits, uh, <laughs> solving the junior doctor's uh, dispute. And yeah. It's like, these aren't things that the government hasn't been no, trying exactly. to do. This is what, yeah. If there was you a magic bullet. You could do these now. Yeah. 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 It, also, it also really, it, it, it just reeks of desperation. And yeah. what makes that even more painfully obvious is that they've had, you know, at this point, 14 years in and they seem to think that Oh, there's all these things we've mm. failed on, but we'll just push them through in the last hundred days. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, th that isn't a good indictment of your government over the last 14 years. And it certainly doesn't inspire confidence from the elect to it. That yeah. You should get another yeah. term. If you've, if, if the perception is that you've waited 14 years to do all of this and only through some sort of like backhanded deal to get a certain person into power, yeah. that you've decided to fix these five things. And even if, yeah. they're, even if they're successful, the question is, if it was that easy to do in a hundred days, yeah. why, why didn't you yeah. do it 14 years ago? And why did ago? it take you 
power of many leaders yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I, it, they're obviously in a difficult place. And I know that he got, I can't remember who said it, but it was a few weeks ago and he got quite widely mocked for saying it. But like, they just need to march towards the guns, I think they said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, bluntly, you, that is just the, the best thing you can do now is just accept that the best you're going to do is probably 100 seats and sort of try and come to terms with defend, that. Defend. Defend like, your seats that yeah. you've got. Um, yeah, because yeah. if you do anything else more risky, you're you're gambling your 100 seats yeah. for maybe 150, but what's more likely is you'll just end up with 10. That um, would be wild, though. Yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, my, my guess is that, well, I think the local elections will go badly for the Conservatives. Mm-hmm. They might... They might win Tees Valley and lose West Midlands, but I don't. I think Sunak will be fine. Like, I don't think he's going to be ousted. Okay. It just seems. I don't. I think there are enough conservative rebels that they can maybe, maybe force a confidence vote. Okay. But there's there's no way that the rest of the party would vote to get rid of Sunak. No. I just cannot see that no, happening. No, I agree. I yeah. They'd be. They'd have to be. Yeah, Bark and I'm skeptical as to if they, they could even wackers. get enough seats. <laughs> you would have to be wackers. You're going to have to withdraw that, or you've got to go. <laughs> Sorry. Get out of the oh, yeah. I'll stand by it. I'll yeah. stand by it. Um, I'm going to grab yeah. the ceremonial mace next. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today is obviously election day, and when we're recording this, we have no results. And as alluded to in the super bit a minute ago, we are also recording this a day in advance, so none of us have been to the polling station. Shock twist. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, what do you expect to happen? What what numbers are you thinking? We don't need to run through the mayoralties because, as established, yeah. we don't know who they are or where they are. But well, we know on, four. We know four, four of ten um, of the um, of the seats in the local elections and mm. the kind of councils. What what do we expect there? Well, as I said, a bad night for the a bad night for the Tories would be sort of five hundred out of a thousand that they're defending. Mm-hmm. So I reckon three hundred. Okay. I think they could lose up to five hundred. Like I, I would say four to five hundred. They can lose that many. Sorry, you think Ben oh, thinks they're oh, going to have three hundred or lose three hundred? Retain three hundred of the lose oh, seven hundred. Oh, then right, roughly. Okay. Uh, wow. Are you That's taking the big the prediction over or under on that? Uh, it, Depends how you're measuring it. Yeah, more <laughs> okay. or less. I think they're going to lose fewer. between four and five hundred seats. That'll okay. take them to about five hundred. Okay. That's what I think. Labour will pick up most of them, but I think yeah, Labour here's my be. little sub prediction. Oh, Greens, Greens will be on the rise. I think they're gonna really? they're, they're gonna go they're underpriced right now. So Lib Dem or Green, are you, would you, if you had to back one of them, proportionally, I think Greens will do better. Okay, make ben, more gains. Agree, disagree. No, I think I yeah, I think okay, Greens Green Greens are playing <laughs> quite well, and um yeah, so I, yeah, I think Greens. get your bets in now on the Greens. Invest um, in the Greens now. <laughs> by election, who's winning? Um. I think Labour. Confidently? Yeah, but I mean, it's a, they, they've overturned far larger yeah. majorities than this in the last couple of years. Yeah, Labour, by-election. Um, Andy Street, will I, lose? I think Andy Street oh, will tricky. lose narrowly, okay. I think. I think he'll win. I think <gasps> he'll retain it. And Which is a mad... To get, just to make clear, again, I just qualify this, because I have said that I think the Tories going to lose 700 local... Le- yeah. Le- yeah, the contrast here of your predictions. However, <laughs> I think he's going to do quite well because he's s- separated himself. Yeah enough from mm. the Conservative Party and he's seen more as an institution. What about um, the other bloke? Tees Valley? I'll say, I'll say it again. Okay. What about Tees Valley? Will the Tories retain that or lose I, that? I think they will because the polling suggests that he does have a lead. Okay. This is Ben Houchen who won with like 70 something percent in 2021, yeah, which huge. is insane. Um, so I would guess Andy Street loses, Ben Houchen wins. Ben? I'm, I'm winning both. I think they'll win both. Oh, really? Oh, interesting. Wow. Okay, cool. Um, Finally, the the guy who's going for the triple, the one who wants to be MP, councillor, and <laughs> mayor. He's mayor all, yeah. Is he going to get the triple? He's getting all three. Yeah. No, I don't think he'll be mayor. Baby no. triple. No. Um, but we'll both. see. <laughs> yeah. okay. Sadiq Khan. The conflict with Sadiq Khan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just give think, us a percentage. I would say, like, I'm. Oh, percentage oh, he'll win. Oh, okay. As what, in, like, but, what will his number be? Uh, Not your percentage of confidence. 49%. It's tricky. Um, what did he win last time? Uh, depends if you because they have the, uh, it's the second s- round. Yeah, true. Vote. Okay, yeah, they changed the system. I think okay, second round he ended up with like fifty five so or something. Rory basically says just shy of a majority. Yeah, yeah. I think I think slightly less than that. Forty? Uh, no, I go forty five. Oh, you're really trying to price this right in there. <laughs> yeah, you're forty eight. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, cool. Those are the predictions. We will loop back next week to see how we did. Mm. 
In fact, we, we could, could be so horribly wrong. We could maybe on Friday do a bonus podcast where we yeah. just run through the results. I know Jeremy's not here, but Scarlett could do it. Is Scarlett in? This is just a scheduling this meeting. Is... <laughs> <laughs> this is the we'll worst find podcast. out on Friday whether we're here or not based on the company's yeah. scheduling. If this, if the video comes out, watch it. Let us know yeah. your predictions in the comments yes. right now. Yeah, we we predicted three mares. We predicted the man is going for the triple. We predicted the overall man seats. And did we predict anything else? That's it. By election, but By it's election. not a massive one. Predict all of them in the comments and then give yourself a score next time. Be honest. Um, and see if you can beat Ben and Roy. Yeah. There is one other mayoral election that is interesting, actually. And oh. I I think it's Northeast, but again, who it's cares? the whole directions thing. I but can't remember. Who what, cares? Who knows? <laughs> I can't remember exactly the directions that we're talking about. Mm. I think it, it, it must be Northeast. Uh, anyway, it was a Labour mayor, Jamie Driscoll, who mm. was Labour mayor, but he didn't get reselected. Then he got kicked out of the party, I think. Now he's running as an independent against a, set, a different Labour candidate. So he's a sort of independent incumbent trying to beat Labour in this Labour area. So it's, a, it's sort of like the Andy Street thing. You know, can he use his local popularity to beat yeah. uh, someone else? So that's kind of an interesting one where it's Labour versus ex-Labour mm. rather than yeah. Tory v Labour. But, um, interesting. Yeah. Well, we'll loop back to that too on Friday, maybe, depending Possibly. on scheduling. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and let's close today's episode with the World Leader Leaderboard. Every week, we run through our winners and losers Sorry, of the way. week and adjust their positioning on the board based on who is doing well and who is doing badly this week. So, let's start with losers of the week. And Ben, let's start with your loser of the week. Who is it? Yeah, so unsurprisingly, given what's happened this week, Hamza Youssef oh, okay. is my loser of the Fair. week. And I actually want to put in an application to uh, get him rid, get rid. Oh, you want board. to kick him off the board? Wow. Yeah. I was like, he's done. Record. He's done. He is done. Yeah, I think we can remove fair. him from the board. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. He's off the board. Do you want to explain quickly? Yeah, I mean, he was first minister. He technically is still first minister, but he is soon to not be first minister. Uh, he had a little uh, sort of metaphorical punch up with the Greens and lost, and now he's he's done. You can have him. I, I have. Sorry, just side note. I've just realised I haven't actually printed my up. That is an issue. Oh, that dear. is an issue. Good job, it's animated now. Yeah. Is it? Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> ben literally Head of does podcasts. Not. No, I do know. I do know it's animated. <laughs> I didn't know that it was only animated though. Well, I well mean, it's not. It, yeah. Do you not just see me go over there? No, I did, but this is what I'm saying. Is that <laughs> this is why I'm saying it's an issue that I haven't printed okay. it. This could be the podcast that seals the fate of podcasts. This, is, this podcast yeah. has killed the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, um, comment in the chat if you want the podcast to yeah. die on the back of this. Uh, uh, Rory, yeah. who is your loser of the week? I am moving down friend of the channel, <laughs> Fumio Kishida. No! <laughs> I say friend of the channel just because I feel bad because I think I put him on there in the first place and this entire time I've been moving him between the bottom two rungs, I think. Oh, he's in the, he's in the third from the bottom oh, currently. He's so he's moving down he one. Down. Yeah, so his party, the Liberal Democratic Party in Japan, uh, they lost three by-elections in one day uh, on Sunday, I think, which is really bad um, for obvious reasons. Um, he has he's deeply unpopular the party is sinking in the polls they're going through a bit of a crisis there was this big sort of corruption scandal um, and there's a lot of talk it's, there's actually quite a good parallel with Rishi Sunak I think where very unpopular leader mm. party there's lots of kind of talks behind the scenes about oh, will I get rid of him but the reason why they're probably safe is because there isn't a clear alternative yeah um, but he's going down anyway because yeah Seems three fair. by-elections in one day is bad yeah. Ben, who is your winner of the week? My winner of the week, which I don't have a face for currently, is um, Nigel Farage. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. I'd like to apply to have, to have him on the board. He would... Interesting. I was going to say he might be the only unelected person, like, not in an elected position on the board, but I think... Is King Charles on there? No, not anymore. He would be... The, oh, oh. Star, Starmer. I suppose also Ayatollah Khomeini isn't exactly elected. True. Well... So, uh, we won't get into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, make your case. So the, the reasons are is that there's more speculation that he's going to come back and join uh, and possibly even lead Reform UK this week. Um, sort of say, especially because of the local elections, if the Tories do badly enough, that he might come back. Luckily for him as well, 
uh, the way that Reform UK is set up is they wouldn't need to do any leadership election. He'd mm -hmm. just come back and sort of take over. Um, and I think it's looking... I, I mean, he, he, I think they're still he's still going to struggle to get a parliamentary seat, which is reportedly what he wants. But at the minute, I think this is sort of the best chance he's had since UKIP almost 10 years ago now to... Uh, you know, do very well in a general election and possibly win a parliamentary seat. So were he to come back, and I think that it is, we're getting closer and closer to that point, I think it, it would work out quite well for him. So, and all of this sort of press coverage and speculation about whether he's coming back only builds into this sort of, uh, this whole thing with him. Hmm. Convinced? Um, uh, uh, it, uh, uh, at what? Uh, the case what? that he, should, he should be oh. on the board. Um, I, there's a case that he's having a fairly good time, I guess. Uh, he's, I mean, yeah, we've got... We've got David Cameron, I guess. <laughs> we've got all sorts of, dare yeah. I say, less than world leader people on there. We'll allow it, but I'm not happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And actually, I'm going to say we'll allow it. But if you forget to print off, cut out and stick him on the board by next week, he's, he's, he's not allowed. Yeah, he's, okay. I'll You've got that. one week. Yeah. Or I've maybe days, depending on TODR's scheduling and whether we go oh, in an oh, emergency just, one. Is this just before the next podcast that we do? Before the next podcast, he needs to be on right, the wall. Okay. Mm. He can't be added. Someone else can add him in the future, but you can never add him. Right. You're okay. frozen out of this round. <laughs> <laughs> Farage, right. yeah. Frozen out on Farage. You are. Um, Rory, who is your winner of the week? My winner of the week is <gasps> Mark Rutter. Oh. Excellently he, Thank you. Has um, he never been on the board? He's before? never been on the board. That we often bad. think he is because Ulf Christensen is. Ulf Christensen sure is, and they sort of look similar. They do look similar. Um, so Are Mark we sure we've not just lost his picture? Possibly. I genuinely think he's been he on the board. He must have been on the board well, before. <laughs> I wasted time and the ink records. printing him out. Um, he is still Dutch Prime Minister, somehow, um, outgoing, uh, but he just he's effectively running to be the next Secretary General of NATO, and he's got a lot of backing, and he got the crucial backing of Turkey. President Erdogan backed him, uh, which is... Turkey and Hungary were the sort of two holdouts, I think, mm -hmm. um, as, with, you know, they're often the ones with uh, with NATO. Um, but, yeah, he's got the backing for Turkey now to be NATO's next leader. So he's on course, not confirmed, but sort mm -hmm. of on course to, to getting that job, which would be nice for him, yeah. I guess, going from prime minister to NATO leader. Absolutely. Which is interesting because when he resigned or said he would resign as prime minister, I'm pretty sure he said something along the lines of, you know, I don't know what I'll do. Maybe I'll go back to teaching. Maybe I'll do this. You know, it's very humble. And yeah. now it's like head of NATO. It's a bit... <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's doing all right. So put him, put him on there. I mean, this is a dubious ad too, I've got to yeah, say as I well. Felt... Like maybe head of Nate, like he's still kind of nothing. <laughs> At least he's still prime minister. Though. He is still yeah. prime minister, that is true. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll allow it. But we will mix it's pretty up weak. with It's pretty weak week this week. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> this, this podcast is going to shamble the rest of all <laughs> Um, we will see you maybe oh. on Friday yeah. for another edition where we round <laughs> up the Doctor move Trudeau. What? <laughs> Trudeau. We didn't even <laughs> do Trudeau. So that was the whole uh, point. Yeah. This is unbelievable. <laughs> this is the I end. I can't believe people listen to this. Well, I, I don't think they do. I don't think they should. Uh, uh, where we got to move Trudeau. Trudeau. It's a Canada special. We've got to move Trudeau down because oh. vaguely, like, general vibe of Canadian politics is that his party polling way in second place behind what? the Conservatives. So what? So what? What's actually happening? Like what, Trudeau's what's, going down. Trudeau's going down. What do you mean? Yeah. What do you believe about? I thought we have quite quite vigorously enforced and established rules that is one up, one down per yeah. person. And we also quite vigorously established that he needed to move. But both of you did not. <laughs> I didn't forget. I wasn't involved. You definitely were in the room. Yeah. Um, yeah. What a mess. Should we explain what the Canada thing mess. now at the end of the episode, just in case anyone's sticking well, no, around and wondering? I feel like the people who are here still are yeah. the same people who are here still last week, and they get it. Yeah. It's the people at the beginning who are immediately put off by the Canada branding. And instantly closed It's the too late now. We're yeah. how many minutes deep? Uh, 38. 38 minutes deep ish, depending on edits. I mean, it's going to be a lot of edits. I reckon we're going to be about like 15 minutes. <laughs> 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 what a oh, terrible dear. episode of the world's worst politics podcast. Should we, that should be the title. The title That's a great be the title. Worst, title. The worst podcast we've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Remember we did a podcast called We're Quitting Brackets, maybe. And it did really well. It did really well. It did a lot better than the one where we said yeah. we're coming back. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants us to come back. Everyone yeah. wants us to leave. Oh, uh, well... 
Speaking of which, we are going to leave and we will be back next week or Friday. Either way, we Depending will discuss my collections <laughs> and review the predictions. And yeah. Remember, do your own predictions. Tell us who should be moving on the leaderboard and tell us, uh, make the comment section really Canadian. Like, I don't know what that means, but if you're still here, comment something vaguely Canadian, just because, like, this episode has not been Canadian enough, and we forgot about Trudeau. So we've got to make up for it, otherwise we've got to do another Canada special soon. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I'm out. Oh, <laughs> come on. That was a great ending. <laughs> what, uh, what did you say? I just said a great oh, thank you.